Okay, here are some basics about ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol. ARP is a really important um, protocol because it plays a really important role in the functioning of local area networks and how local area networks function. Um, ARP resolves IP addresses to MAC addresses at layer 2. So if we want to send a packet or send a frame to another host on the local network or even let's say our router or gateway, um, we have to know the MAC address of the host that we want to deliver to. And what ARP will do for us is it will help us resolve that MAC address. What is that MAC address um, from an IP address? So ARP resolves IP addresses to MAC addresses at layer 2. Um, and we need ARP for the functioning of Ethernet, essentially. And ARP is a pretty interesting protocol because it's used in um, some security attacks uh, and what's known as ARP spoofing. So it's a pretty interesting protocol on a lot of different layers. I'm going to demonstrate a little bit about how ARP functions. Um, so let's get to it. Let's say, first of all, I have a diagram here. And I've got two networks here. We're going to look at this network over here. So here's a laptop. There's a wireless router. There's the internet. All right. Now, if I want to get a web page from the internet, I'm using my web browser, and I want to, let's say, go to Yahoo. Right. I'm going to need to send that request to my gateway, and it's going to go to my wireless router. But to deliver that request to my wireless router, I need to know my wireless router's MAC address because on a local network frames are delivered to MAC addresses. They're not delivered to IP addresses, they're delivered to MAC addresses. IP addresses help us to reach networks, to find networks or route data to different networks, right? But to deliver the actual frames on a local network, it needs to be delivered to a MAC address. So I need to know my MAC address, the MAC address of this router if I want to send a packet to it. So if we look at let's say my command prompt here I've got a Windows 7 machine I've got a command prompt right and we look at the ARP cache by typing in ARP A you can see that at the top here my main interface here is 2.103 that's me and you can see here that I know about 192.168.2.1 right and that is my router my wireless router and you can see I have the MAC address in my ARP cache so ARP has already helped me resolve the um, physical address of my router and you can see here that I don't know any other hosts on this network I cannot deliver to any other hosts on the network basically um, because I don't have their MAC addresses I need their physical addresses if I want to deliver a packet so right now I can send to my router now some of these other addresses are different. Uh, 2.255 is a broadcast address and you can see that it has an FFFFF. These are all these F's are a broadcast MAC address, layer 2 address. And then these 224 addresses and this 239 address are all multicast IP addresses and they all have multicast MAC addresses. Notice how they all the MAC addresses start with 01-00-5e. If it starts with that number range, it's a multicast MAC address. And then down here you can see 255, 255, 255, 255, and then another broadcast MAC address. If you're interested in um, MAC addresses and you want to know about these multicast MAC addresses, you can look it up on Wikipedia and find um, these number ranges for uh, certain IP addresses and certain MAC addresses like multicast addresses. Okay, so I know my router's IP address and I know the MAC address so I can deliver to him. Now, um, the way ARP does, the way ARP works is it resolves this this very issue. So what we're going to do is we'll we'll just run a test. What I'm going to do is say ARP dash D and that will delete my ARP cache, right? And now if I run an ARP A command you can see that well I'm not supposed to have that so we'll try that again ARP dash D and then ARP A and ARP dash D somebody's broadcasting and ARP A okay no ARP entries found alright ARP dash D ARP dash A no ARP entries found okay so there we go so we've deleted the ARP cache 
and now what I'm going to do is I'll open up Wireshark right and I'll go to capture interfaces and my active interface is right here you can see packets so I'll go to options and I'll set up a filter now I've already set up a filter with this if I say capture filter I selected new and I created an ARP only filter so it will capture only ARP packets you can see it right there ARP only and then the filter string is ARP click OK and click start right and now what I'll do is is I'll open up a browser window let's say right and I'll ask for let's say yahoo.com and browse to yahoo.com and I should be getting some action in my in my ARP window and I am not so let's try to do that again we'll make sure we delete the ARP entries okay nope I've already got it there delete delete no entries found and I'll go to my window and hit refresh and I'll look in my capture dialog in Wireshark and you can see here I've begun to capture some art packets here so now that that's done I'll say capture stop and we can take a look at these art packets that we captured with Wireshark and basically what I was doing is was deleting my ARP cache right and so that I don't have my routers physical address resolved so ARP will function and then we can capture those packets so you can see here that ARP's done just that okay so let's analyze these um, these packets that we've captured using Wireshark well first of all you can see that there's no IP addresses involved here we're talking about layer 2 here so the source address here says Cisco right and you can see here this is a MAC address but instead of just all hexadecimal numbers the beginning says Cisco dash li well why is that well the first um, six characters of a MAC address is the organizational unique identifier or OUI which identifies the company so we know right off the bat that my wireless access point has a um, Cisco NIC basically or Cisco MAC address and that would make sense because it's a Linksys access point and Cisco owns Linksys so and it says Cisco LI right and um, and you can find that you can just look that up online and find those MAC addresses but that's the way Wireshark can identify it as a Cisco device and the destination MAC address is an Intel MAC address and this is my MAC address so this is a message from Cisco to me saying who has um, who has 2.103 tell 2.1 so who has my MAC address tell the router so the router is trying to find my MAC address right the, the router is trying to fill its ARP cache with my MAC address and you can see on the next line on line 2 I have replied and I've given my MAC address to the um, to the router and then on line 3 you can see that I have it's, this is Intel so this is my NIC this is my MAC address and I've sent a broadcast MAC address meaning all F's right F F F F F and you can see down here that there's the F's right there right so broadcast MAC address ARP protocol who has 2.1 tell me who has the routers MAC address and then the router replies with his MAC address right so here are some ARP exchanges and this is my computer finding out the MAC address of the Linksys router so the point is is that before my computer can request that web page from the internet basically or from the router request and, and go to Yahoo and get that web page my computer needs to find out the MAC address of my Linksys router so I can send the frame to the Linksys wireless router so I have to resolve the MAC address first before I'm gonna be able to get that Yahoo web page so if we go back to the diagram 
So if I want to get Yahoo out here on the internet, I need to resolve the MAC address of my wireless router right away. And you can see now, if we do an ARP A, dash A, I have resolved 2.1, and I know the MAC address of the wireless router. And this process ha happens behind the scenes without you even knowing it, but we can observe it if we capture the packets and take a look at it.